Welcome to my presentation at Curl App 2022 about HTTP3 in Curl. So I'm going to try to talk a little bit about HTTP3 and Quick, what it is, how it works, sort of a little bit about the differences of what HTTP3 brings that we didn't have with the other HTTP versions, how it works a little bit inside the architecture in curl, a little bit how to use it with the curl command line tool, how to use it with libcurl, and you know, a little bit of that. that. And I'll try to do it in 30 minutes or so. <clears throat> so this is what I'm going to get to. It is different than the previous HTTP versions. And how is it different? How do we build curl to use this? Um, and sort of how do you run actual HTTP 3 transfers with the call tool and a little bit how to do it with the library. And of course, all of this starts or is built upon Quick. Quick is a new transport protocol. You know, it replaces TCP and TLS. It's a post TCP world, right? So this is a new protocol. And when you do a new protocol in this day and age, uh, you can address some of the shortcomings that we have lived with for the last you know in the in the last few decades and in particular then the the shortcomings with tcp tls and http1 and http2 so for example this um, introducing quick fixes the problem we've had with, pre with previous http versions with the tcp head of line blocking that's a particular problem in http2 which basically means that we do a lot of streams over the same physical TCP connection with HTTP2. And if you drop a packet, it affects all of the streams on that TCP connection, not just one stream, but possibly hundreds of streams. We can do faster handshakes so we can get up to a connection and send data faster, fewer run trips back and forth. We can send the data even earlier in that handshake or even have no handshake at all. We actually have zero RTTs. But basically, if you've had a connection before, you can basically start sending data immediately without losing time in round trips back and forth. And of course, we can encrypt more of the data, more of the connection, more of everything to uh, for privacy and security, but um, also for the removing ossification, right? So that nobody around you can learn and, and do stupid things based on traffic patterns as people have repeatedly been doing over the pa uh, in the past you know when when things when middle boxes can learn things from the traffic and of course this also ideally hopefully possibly uh, and, uh, enables more future development that we've had pre in, in previous transport protocols like tcp when basically everything stops uh, developing because everyone all the middle boxes software have already figured out how it works and then later on it's very hard to change because everyone has already established a, a usage, pa usage pattern. So Quick is a protocol, I, I told you, it's a replacement for TCP and TLS, so it's built on top of UDP instead. So it's basically treating UDP as it was, uh, as if it was IP. So basically um, it's a, a transport protocol on top of UDP. So it implements a reliable transport protocol in user space, sending UDP packets. A little bit of TCP and TLS done in, in a different way in a single protocol on top of UDP. That's quick, the transport protocol, so that's not HTTP at all. So thanks to this being a new transport protocol, the transport protocol itself has streams built in. So the, the thing of, of the past, you know, if you remember HTTP2, it has streams in the HTTP, HTTP layer. This is in the layer beneath, right? This is the transport protocol itself providing streams. So you have many logical flows within a single physical connection. So you set up a connection, you can still do, do a lot of independent uh, separate streams over that connection. Um, so it's, it's a layer below then, and then in HTTP2, which then of course makes it easier now to make other protocols on top of Quick to also use streams. And these streams are independent. They're not, uh, they're actually, well, they are in order and they are reliable, but they are independent. So if you drop a packet uh, with a Quick connection, you can drop a packet that belongs to one stream, but the, so you have to wait, that stream has to pause then until you can resend that particular packet that was lost. But the other streams, 
that didn't lose any packets, they may continue. So you can actually get the streams arrive in a different order than they were sent from the other end, just because of that. Oh, this looks horrible. What happened? Uh, and an animation gone wrong. Okay, so <coughs> this is my uh, vision or, or sort of main explanation of how, how this then works. Um, the, the, the stacks separated. I should have had some f nicer animation here. But you know, from the left side here, starts with the HTTP one way to do things. You have the IP layer in the bottom. You see, as you can see, that's the same thing for all the protocols. And back in the day, then left side, we did TCP and the handle connections, and we put TLS on that, and we did HTTP, HTTP one even. And uh, um, and then of course when we went into HTTP two, it was a slight difference in, in that we added compression and we added streams and server push and so on in the HTTP2 layer. But the uh, the rest was the same, right? Still, still the same TCP, the same TLS, well, virtually the same at least. But then in the new HTTP3 world, we introduced this, this new, these new yellow components then. So quick is an entirely new building block here as a new transport protocol stack on top of UDP as, and the UDP one is new here as well, right? So the connections are now handled in that quick box and also the streams and the TLS is part of built into quick. And then we build HTTP 3 on top of that, that also then ser uh, offers server push and, and header compressions and, and, and things like that. Um, and then what perhaps is most important here is that the HTTP semantics, they are still the same. You still do, you know, the methods, the headers, the trailers, the blah, blah, all of that. The, f so for, for the ordinary, maybe the ordinary HTTP user, um, this is they still see the same HTTP semantics, even if it changes over the wire. Uh, but for, of course, for most users, like users of curl or users of browsers or users of other things talking HTTP, they don't even, usually don't even have to care about the difference uh, underneath the semantics layer here, right? Maybe I, you should also then, uh, I, I could highlight the part, you know, the little dash dashes around the two bottom layers here, you can see, and I marked that as kernel space, the label down left. So usually the TCP IP stack in your kernel, it takes care of IP and TCP and UDP. Well, right, hence TCP IP, right? And the stuff on top of that is done in user space. And interesting here, maybe then is to see the the yellow part, right? Because that's the quick in HTTP 3. So that's more stuff, I would say, in user space now. So more of the uh, actual transport stack or network stack is now in the user space part compared to before. <coughs> And that's sort of the difference is how we've gone into HTTP 3 in HTTP 3 architecture. And HTTP, then we go back to like URLs and how we use tools to access the internet, right? So we, H we have HTTPS colon slash slash URLs. And that has been TCP for ages, right? We, HTTPS was introduced in, in the 90s. So um, it's been there for a while. So how do we change from that TCP world using HTTPS into an HTTPS world where we talk quick instead of TCP. So, well, we can't change the URLs. They're there forever. They're everywhere. We can sort of, we have to live with them. Uh, and we know that TCP, actually HTTPS then, so TCP and TLS defaults to port number 443 over TCP. So we can expect this to still be there at some some part. But the the standard way to figure out then if how to speak HTTP three over quick then instead of HTTP two over TLS is this header. So you basically first have to go to the server over TC, uh, TCP, the old style the, using the one of the older HTTP versions, get a response header back that says, hey I am the same server also over here where I talk HTTP three for the next 
uh, f for a foreseeable time, maybe a month, maybe a year, maybe a week, maybe an hour. So a client would then, when you reload the same host, you go to the same host again, you would go to the new place that this host told you serves HTTP 3 instead. So it's basically you need another round trip to, to go to the... There is also an, a DNS record coming basically with the same information which, which will then possibly solve that uh, round trip uh, so uh, quote unquote waste and then you could uh, look up that uh, DNS entry instead and, and go maybe directly HTTP 3 without doing that extra request to, to the HTTP 1 or HTTP 2 host first. There are a bunch of challenges with deploying and running HTTP 3 uh, today and has been for a long time. Uh, th these numbers are a bit old now so maybe they're different right but, but the, back in the day when people actually still mentioned these numbers somewhere around three to five percent of all quick att uh, connection attempts failed because uh, organization companies routers things in between uh, prevented UDP connections from the client to the intended server so based on sort of a fairly high failure fail rate then to set up connections all clients basically have to have fallback algorithms and and like all clients basically browsers have that right so they set up they try to set up hp3 but can fall back pretty you know seamlessly to h1 or h2 uh, so this also then of course uh, still allows people to maintain these blocks and and hurdles for h3 because users m many users won't even notice that you can't speak h3 because the clients will just silently go back to, to the version uh, previous version a previous version it's very cpu intensive it should be three in general uses much more cpu both server side well server side is actually where it matters the most because then you usually you know get a lot of connections so you have many users at the same place client side it, it tends to use more cpu as well but it's less of a problem there because usually you're, you're basically on your own machine when you so it, it's not as as big of an issue there we have a lot of unoptimized UDP stacks in the world. So UDP is actually, uh, I think, ironically, often slower than TCP in a lot of implementation. It has certainly been in, in Linux and Windows for a long time. This is starting to catch up. So this is an overgoing issue, of course. And there's this funny TLS layer. Quick in, uh, uses TLS 1.3, but it uses it differently than TLS has ever been used before. So uh, therefore, if you want to use an existing TLS library with when you implement Quick, you have to have new API functions that no, no TLS library offered before this uh, effort started. Now, quite a few does, but uh, there are still a, f a few that don't offer any such API. Uh, so then you can't use those libraries to write uh, Quick stacks. One notable example who who have decided to not do this is OpenSSL, for example. So you can't use uh, the plain release version of OpenSSL to write the quick stack because it doesn't have the necessary APIs. Of course, one of the challenges with HTTP3 is also that all, use, uh, all quick stacks are user land, which means that you need to link with that particular library you want to use and they don't have any standard quick API so they all provide their own APIs which means that you marry your particular library pretty hard so you have to lean on that so you have to figure out exactly which one you want to go to bed with b before you go there um, and of course it also makes it easier because it, since it's user land it's also easier to up update so you can you know iterate fast and everything all, all of that and it's easy to replace Whenever you, you know you decide, oh, hey, that's not the one I want to use. I want to go with that one instead. It's easy for you. Well, easy, because it's going to be a completely different API with a new one. Uh, and of course, you need to work with a new tools because this is not TCP anymore. So all of that, you know, you learned, you know, Windows and number segment numbers or whatever you do in TCP is gone. It's not there anymore. We, we've now replaced TCP with Quick. So you need new tools. Even if Wireshark is there, of course, and there are new QVIS and QLog or new tools to do, help you debug and, and visualize and, and understand Quick flows. But still, there are some challenges. All browsers already support um, Quick and HP3, of course, 
I think Safari might be the last one who actually enabled it by default. I think they do that now. I don't recall exactly when they should start or have started, but all the other ones I think already do it by default. So basically, if you go to a lot of the big sites today, or you already you are already using HTTP three. In fact, um, it is already widely used. So I just checked while this is actually numbers from from several months ago when I checked. Uh, Firefox Beta 101, just because they provide uh, this information, so that was the newest I could check back in June or so. And and at that time, 28% of the Firefox traffic used HTTP3, which I think is a significant amount of data. And uh, looking on the server side, we can see that 25% of the top sites in the world are already offering or serving HTTP3 content. So it's has. It is there already to a pretty far extent, uh, so it's certainly here already. And of course, it's already and, and it's been shipping in, in RFCs. There's a whole range of RFCs if you want to read up on the details on how to implement the protocol. It's fairly complicated, but uh, all readable. So that's HTTP three and Quake. How to do? How, how do you build curl with this? Well, first, of course, we need to remember that Quick and HTTP three supporting curl is experimental. It's not enabled by default. You have to actually explicitly tell uh, configure or CMake the, whatever you want to use to enable this in your build, because otherwise you won't have it there. But if you do, if you want to build curl, you need to remember, of course, that it requires third party libraries for for anything low level. Basically, the Quick and HTTP three binary uh, stuff. And you select backend, of course, as always. Uh, you mean I? Uh, I mean, curl already supports a wide variety of different TLS backends, right? This is just the same thing. Curl supports also three different backends for for it to be three. So you select the one you want to use: Quiche, NGTCP2, or MSH3. Um, you decide. Um, they are different in in several ways. They have different somewhat different licenses, maybe not by the way, but they have different features at least, and they work on different platforms um, and they work with different TLS libraries. And again, the TLS library situation is messy, so you need to read up on that. And they all these three have vastly different APIs, so they are certainly different beasts to use. Not that it matters for you that much when you build curl, because we already have the adaptations for the different uh, libraries within curl. So that particular thing, you, maybe you don't need to figure out, uh, think that much about. But okay, we now sort of just announced, bam, this this is a, a, a you know, everything at once slide. So this is the, this is my map schematics over the back end situation in libcurl. And, and, and if you bear with me, the, an application is up there in the yellow cloud. That's the application that is using the public API, which is then the, the white box there that curl provides. Basically, that's the public API. That's a stable, solid thing that, that will be there. It's, uh, you know, backwards compatible. We don't break it. It's an, also an ABI, of course. But that's how the application gets into curl. But within curl, we have a bunch of different backends or sort of internal APIs to provide different pluggable backends. As you can see, if we start, if we go clockwise from the public public API, we see the HTTP backend, we have the HTTP three backend, we have the TLS backend, we have the SSH backend, we have the IDN backend, and the resolver backend, and the content encoding backend. What this means is that curl, the main curl engine, has a lot of different choices to do internally or rather when you build curl you can build you can do those choices so when you build the, f uh, the executable curl it has a few of those selected already so pretty much if we're looking then at the HTTP 3 backend at the right downside there you can see that the, the internal public API that speaks HTTP 3 it uses one of the different backends that's the quiche MSH 3 or NGHP 3 backends so that's how it works. And then of course, so um, it just shows that the HTTP three way to do backends is the same kind of style that we do backends for a lot of other different things in, in the curl project. Um, and if you in, if we don't look specifically on the HTTP three 
way to do things in curl there's also this additional sort of little uh, dimension so http3 in curl of course it's under the http umbrella perhaps because when you use http it, it could then select to do it with version 3 and when you build curl you select to use one of one of these different columns you go with a quiche msh3 or nghp3 three different columns and you go with one of these and depending on which one you choose from the top you have a, you have to go with the ones below so if you go with from the right side ng http3 if you, that's the http3 library it uses the ng tcp2 library for quick and the, and that ng tcp2 library it uses one of the tls libraries below for t the tls part um, and so on so if you pick the one in the middle msh3 that uses ms quick as a quick library and one of the tls libraries below for the tls part and the same thing goes with quiche so quiche is both http3 and quick and it uses one of the tls libraries below so it uses um, in the quiche case it uses just quick tls or boring ssl uh, and you should maybe uh, notice here that quick tls is mentioned as a tls library for all three columns quick tls is a fork of OpenSSL, which has a, um, added quick api that the same quick api that the OpenSSL project themselves have said that they will not provide so that's what hence the fork boring ssl is you know that's an old uh, google fork of OpenSSL that has the same api actually but they are going to stick with that api and then there's the the other set of other libraries i work for wolf ssl so i, I want to highlight the part that actually if you want to go with wolf ssl or just the fact that if you go with the rightmost column here you go with one that supports the most number of tls libraries but again uh, it's your choice really um, they're all at different stages of maturity or immaturity or beta version or not beta version so that's that's wh what you do sort of when you think of curl and hp3 and then you of course you want to use curl with hp3 and you then you should know that curl of course looks like well pretty much everything in curl looks like hp1 when you use it even though it could be other versions we have sort of made it uh, look like it used to look like back in the day so when you run curl for example you want to do http3 you use this option dash dash http3 and it then will just it'll just switch to use quick and http3 on that host name uh, used in that url uh, and yes we don't have any fallback i think that's something we need to work on uh, for the future and, and sort of out and an outstanding thing to do because as i said a lot of connection attempts will fail so we might want to be able to just fall back to another version and you, this is how you do the old service thing so that you can ask the server aha th that's how this we go over there to do the http3 speak because that's the standard way to bootstrap into http3 right as i mentioned already um, and the initial request then to get to do that initial to get the old service header back you can do it either h1 or h2 and yeah that's documented so when you run curl you just do it like this this is your terminal right the key here being dash dash http3 burp and you can of course add dash v for verbose and then you will see every tiny little detail as usual and if you want to do it the old service way which then um, might or might not upgrade to http3 because this basically allows it to upgrade if it has an H uh, old service header otherwise it will not upgrade to hp3 um, and if you do dash dash version you will see that uh, it supports hp3 by by if it shows the feature if it doesn't show hp3 as a feature it's not built with hp3 support and then dash dash hp3 won't work um, <coughs> most of everything works so you can connect with http3 uh, well it actually connects with quick but uh, it, it works with http3 and it works with the uh, ipv4 ipv6 and happy eyeballs so it actually tries to do both both ipv4 and ipv6 quick at, at, at the same time and get uh, 
picks the fastest connection, it picks the one that connects first. Um, so, and you can do funny host name tricks like res just resolve and funds, and you can do all the HTTP methods, you know, put post, uh, upload, and download and everything. You can do all those funny things with headers that we can do with curl. Yeah, everything that is cookies connection caching, connection reuse, uh, all of that is working or should work. Um, so, what is not working, what's still lacking, is uh, that primarily for 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 um, at least for application, this is going to be a sort of a setback for you that we don't have proper multiplexing support yet for it to be three. So if you set up two transfers to the same host name, you want them multiplexed like we do with HTTP two, but we don't do that with HTTP three yet. Just lack, we haven't done it yet. Nobody has taken the time to make it happen. It shouldn't be that hard. And it, sh it is, I mean, all the libraries support it. So we should just make sure that it works and it's there. HTTP SS uh, resource record, it's a d that's the DNS record I've talked about that can, we can look up and get a clue that we should go th to a server to talk HTTP 3 directly instead of trying TCP on TLS first somewhere. Very handy, but it's going to introduce some challenges to support. And we have no tests landed yet and we don't have any CI builds. We have CI builds that verify the builds, but they don't actually test that the code still runs. And I'm, I'm sure there, there's more. I haven't really thought about everything uh, very carefully, exactly how, what's missing. But I'm sure that once we start to, you know, scratch the surface more and get deeper into the HTTP3 and really start it to try to use it, we'll find more things to, to fix and work on. And uh, when you're going to go into the machine and, and want to play with libcurl uh, and, and do HTTP3, it's really easy. It's as easy as using the lib uh, using HTTP3 with the tool. Um, so basically, this is how you force an HTTP3 connection, and this is pretty much the same. And here's a very basic uh, lib curl code, right? And what's focus on this little square because this asks for HTTP3 version, HTTP version three uh, in the transfer. Pretty much the the equivalent to dash dash HTTP3 for the command line tool, right? So bam, that's all you need. Of course, assuming that you have a build that is built to support HTTP3, uh, HTTP3, because if you don't, this setup function will return an error. Um, and of course, you can also do it with the old service style where, where you then you set, um, well, actually, you, you ask, you say, say that it's okay to go to HTTP 3 in the, this setup option, basically, when you, when you tell curl what kind of alternative services you will accept. And on the line above it, it actually tells you what file to cache this information in, in case you want to have it on disk between invokes. You don't have to. And of course, of course you can check for the presence of, of HTTP 3 support by f checking this, um, well, you know, the, the feature flags, uh, just, just use the curl version info function and check the, the bits, you know, it should be two, it should be three, old service, whatever, because they are and can be build time selectable, you know, can switch them on and off. So that's basically what you need. Uh, and now there's nothing preventing you from trying this out yourself. Um, so the question is then, of course, when will you curl ship um, with HTTP3 support? You know, like in distros and, and everywhere and, and officially and everything. And uh, then I have this little, uh, well, pyramid of things that need to be in place, I think, before at least, you know, Linux distributions and operating systems uh, and so on will start to ship curl built with HTTP3. So we need specifications. We need deployed servers. I think the browser support has to be there. And we need to have the quick uh, HTTP3 libraries in some sort of state where they think it's fine for us to, to do them. The TLS situa situation needs to be there. And libcurl, of course, has to have the support, uh, uh, preferably in a non-experimental state. And then we can ship curl with, with it enabled. And looking from the bottom again how, how the state is 
uh, for everything. So we have the specifications, like they actually shipped the last ones uh, a while ago now. Th there should be three uh, quick ones came first and there should be three ones um, arrived later, but they're still here and they're here now, certainly. We have a lot of deployed servers. I mean, many big server uh, instances like, you know, Google, Facebook, uh, Cloudflare, Fastly, a lot of those. And I think, uh, um, well, well, more more and more server deployments and even server software stacks are now supporting HTTP3. So they're certainly there. As I mentioned already, the browsers already support it and they use it already. So we can then we get up into the sort of less good territories, right? So the quick and HTTP3 libraries, they are still in beta versions. I don't think any of them has sort of gone off non-beta of the ones we support, those three different, you know, columns. And the TLS situation is shaky, I think, primarily because we are in a world where people like to use OpenSSL uh, a little bit too much. And as I said uh, already, the OpenSSL situation with Quick is horrible. So hence the sort of the dual situation here. There are libraries with a much better story and a better situation, but they're also less popular in, in, the, in the distros and, and among the crowds. And then of course in libcurl we still have this marked experimental as i said we still have outstanding things to do with hp3 so i still think that red cross here is warranted so we're not quite there yet soon we just need to work a little bit more on it and then soon we will be there but sure it will take a little while uh, until we get our stuff in order until the tls situation uh, improves and yeah you can help so HTTP3 will remain experimental for now, for, for the future going forward a while longer. I have tried to explain how HTTP3 works in this little book, HTTP3 explained, uh, in case you want to get into some more details. The, it's not on a byte level, it's still on you know, an explanatory level if, you, if you're interested in, in figuring out more details around HTTP3 and how it actually works and why and uh, thank you for listening and uh, if you see this at curl up i'm available for questions uh, right after this if you don't watch this at curl up well you can ask me somewhere else because uh, this is a recording bye